What else have you changed your mind on? Well, this, you know, in some ways sorts of, sort of builds off the last one a little bit, but it's, it's basically this idea that, that, that childhood experiences um, can matter in ways that after the fact seem sort of irrelevant. So, um, so that's not the belief that you have reversed. That's the current. Yes, that's, that's the current correct. Belief. The current belief is, yeah, so, so I'll rephrase it. I used to believe that, um, that, you know, traumatic events in your childhood probably weren't that relevant or could be net positives if they, you know, and it's, it, this is effectively like a parallel to the first thing, um, to, to the previous one we talked about, about personality stuff. I, I think what I've come to realize through, you know, extensive interaction with experts in this space, my own experience, the experience now of many people that I know is if a child perceives helplessness, even as an adult, if you look back and think eh, that wasn't so helpless, um, you have to be thoughtful about what the implications and ramifications of that are going forward, right? So, um, you know, for example, let's take an extreme example. If a child loses a parent when they're young, um, you might say, well, look, they have another parent. That other parent is a loving parent. Everything is going to be fine. But there's an enormous amount of chaos that's inserted into that person's life. And, um, if a child perceives that as, as like helplessness, um, that can really shape the, uh, the subsequent years of their life. That can shape aspects of their personality that I don't think I ever, I just don't think I really understood and appreciated before. And I've seen this now with a number of my patients, for example, using that example, patients who lost parents when they were very young, seven years old, eight years old, 12 years old, um, suddenly and or tragically, or not suddenly or tragically. I mean, you could have someone who's, you know, suffering for three years with cancer and it's not sudden, but it's still to a child, they perceive things differently. An extension of that, which comes back to this whole thing around anger, and this was part of my motivation to sort of begin to make sure I wasn't so angry was, I almost never got angry at my kids, right? But my kids saw me angry. So, you know, the last time I got really, really pissed in front of my kids was a year ago. And I remember this very well. We were actually driving to a funeral of the mother of one of my daughter's best friends. So this is a young woman, a woman who's, you know, in her forties who dies of cancer. And we're going to the funeral. It was exactly a year ago. So it's not a happy day. And so it's me and my wife and my daughter going to the funeral and I'm driving. And, you know, traffic is sort of moving along at a sort of slow pace. And there's a merging lane that's coming on. And there's this woman who's not paying even a modicum of attention to what's going on. Like she's on her phone or something. And then at the last minute, she just goes, whoosh, like accelerates, jumps in front of us. I almost hit her. And I mean, normally that would be annoying. But on that day, I went ballistic. Now, she didn't even hear me, right? She's in another car. But the torrent of just, you know, profanities and like what I wanted to do to her and say to her and blah, 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 was unbelievable. Heightened presumably by the fact that I was just in this awful mood about all this other stuff, whatever. I never for a moment would have realized like that could have an effect on my daughter. It's like, I'm not yelling at her. I'm not yelling at my wife. I'm not like... You know, I'm yelling at some random stranger in front of us. But I realize that kids internalize that stuff different. Kids, and, you know, my daughter's not a baby, but she's still a child. They internalize that type of stuff as it's still like, it, it's still hitting them, right? So it's, I don't know, I don't know how to think of it. Like, it, there's still shrapnel that is hitting them in a way it wouldn't hit an adult. Um, and so you take an extreme that's very minor, you take an example that's very minor, like that one, versus something that's very major, like the funeral we were going to, which is for her friend's mom. I, I, I don't think we are paying enough attention to how these things that kids experience can shape their personality. And, so, and, and to be clear, like these are two-edged swords. There are some good things that can come from hard experiences. I'm not suggesting everything is negative, but you don't have to throw 
the baby out with the bathwater, right? You can accept some of the positives that come from these things without um, ignoring the things that need to be mended or repaired. So um, I think that that broad topic is something that I have really been much more attentive to uh, both in myself and in my patients and in understanding their, their lives and their emotional health as it pertains to uh, the events of their, of their childhood.